How far should I hold it? You here? Okay. Uh, hi guys, so I'm Michael Bauer and I'm going to be continuing up with sort of the alternatives to Docker talking about singularity uh, and singularity is sort of mainly focused on the HPC side of things. Uh, we've seen a lot of use in scientific research especially. Closer? Here? Good? Okay, so um, I'm working right now as a staff engineer at a startup in Silicon Valley called R Store. Uh, I'll talk a, a little bit about that later on today. Uh, but essentially they're funding some singularity development and then you can also uh, check me out on GitHub at Bauer M97 and you can contact me at either of my email addresses if you want. So this is our singularity website. You'll see it's, it's actually hosted by Lawrence Berkeley Lab right now. So it's singularity.lbl.gov. Um, the project lead Gregory Kurtzer, he worked there for a while before moving to our store. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about containers for scientific computing. Uh, why do we want containers in HPC? The first, m mostly the main reason is to escape, you know, the so-called dependency hell where um, you're trying to run something on your HPC system and nothing works. And so you talk to the sysadmin and you're like, can you install this in this package? And then it still doesn't work. Uh, and 10 days later, you still have no code that can run on the HPC. Um, and so with containers, you can have local and remote code working the same time every time. And then uh, this is sort of specific to the singularity implementation of containers, but you can have one file that is just .img file and it contains everything that you need for your entire workflow and can be transported around, um, you know, uh, via SSH or whatever. It's sort of just one file and it's really easy to manage. Uh, and I already kind of mentioned this, but you can see on the left there, um, this is a container where it's running, you know, whatever code on your computer and it works perfectly. Uh, you run it on your HPC at your university and it doesn't work. Very sad. So, um, one of the main uh, things that sort of separates Singularity from other solutions, especially Docker in the HPC world, is that uh, you can't have HPC container ever getting too close to uh, root. So, I worked at a national lab in Germany for nine months and we were investigating containers just in general for our HPC. And we first looked at Docker, uh, and I actually I asked the system administrator if he would be willing to install Docker on, on the system, and he just kind of looked at me with a blank face and laughed at me and told me he wouldn't do it. Um, so that, that ruled out, at least for, for that site, that ruled out for us Docker completely. Uh, and that's kind of where I found Singularity. Um, and so Singularity is built specifically for high performance computing for you know, multi-tenant uh, supercomputers. And it fulfills, in my opinion, the four necessities for a high performance computing container solution. One is that any user can run any container uh, without root privileges. Uh, two, it integrates perfectly seamlessly into the existing HPC infrastructure that's in place. So for instance, at the lab I was working at, uh, they use Slurm for all their scheduling and it integrates perfectly into Slurm and you don't have to do any extra configuration of the, the scheduling and orchestration systems. Uh, the third is also incredibly important and goes back to sort of the dependency hell issue is that you want it to be uh, portable, very, very portable between as many systems as possible. Uh, and with Singularity, we achieve that because we're not using uh, some of the newer uh, kernel features that technologies like Docker might use. So some of the newer namespaces, they're only being used if it's available. Otherwise, it still works. It still falls back to an older model of running uh, on an older kernel. And so we can run, oh, on kernels something, three something or rather, two something rather, I think even we're having people have success running. Uh, and then the fourth is that you can have users bring their own containers into the into the cloud. You don't have to worry about pre-screening their contents or checking to make sure that they don't have malicious code in the container. Uh, because the permissions model and the security model of Singularity enables anybody to run containers without root, uh, you're the same user inside the container as you are outside the container, which means if you have malicious code uh, that you could run on your infrastructure already, you'll still be able to run it in the container. but you won't be able to do any extra um, sort of attacks because you're in a container. Closer? Like right up here? Okay. <laughs> 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 
So um, just to kind of reiterate on the points I made, any user can run any container, and you're the same user inside your container as outside. Uh, for a scientist, it's also really beneficial using Singularity because they don't really have to make any workflow changes. The only thing that they have to do is package their software into a container and then they run it on the HPC the same way that they're used to doing this already. They don't have to worry about any extra sort of uh, scheduling and orchestration. Um, and then uh, the, th the third one on that list where we have a single image file containing everything, that's actually really important. So we had... Um, this was actually at our store we had where we were um, trying to uh, benchmark some test on a remote file system and it turned out that when you were doing too many I.O. operations the metadata server was essentially getting DDoSed by your program uh, because every time you want to open a file it's you know it's contacting the metadata server and it's slowing it down to a halt. With Singularity if you package those same files just in a container, it completely actually eliminates that entire effect. So you have it on your remote file system, it makes one request to the um, metadata server, and then you have access to everything in there without ever having to call to that metadata server again. Uh, and so we actually saw an improvement in performance when we were running IO constrained um, applications inside a container. And again, it's safe to run any container without screening its contents. Uh, if you're interested in a little more of how we are able to do that, we actually published a research paper in PLOS One. It was, okay, it says submitted at the top. It was actually accepted for publication and published May 20th or 21st or something like that. So you can go and check it out. And we go into more detail about how we're able to achieve um, the HPC side of things and also goes into a little bit of HPC specific comparison between Docker, uh, also Shifter and Charlie Cloud it talks about too in that paper, but I'm not sort of really an expert on that, so I'll refrain. And then I'll go over just a little brief basic usage, uh, sort of the Singularity workflow. You just have three steps. You create your image file uh, by calling Singularity Create. Uh, this operation you need root to do. So you do this on your laptop where you already have root, presumably. You make an image file. Uh, you also then use sudo to bootstrap it where you provide it uh, this definition file here, which is, uh, there's documentation for that available online. You provide it with that definition file and it builds up an image to your specifications. And then you have a single image file with whatever you want in it and you send it wherever you want and you can run the image using uh, those three commands there. So Singularity Shell just runs a shell, an interactive shell. Uh, Singularity Exec runs essentially whatever you want inside the container. And then Singularity Run will, um, in the definition file, there's something called a run script, which just specifies essentially the runtime um, uh, behavior of your image. And, yeah? Can you pass command line parameters to the... Yeah, yeah. Everything is passed exactly as you'd expect it. So you can just... Uh, essentially, what a lot of people will do is they'll substitute... So you'll have this path to executable where previously you would have um, whatever you want to execute and then some operations. You can simply just... Uh, prepend singularity exec image name right in front of that and everything will work exactly the same. Um, as far as uh, images, uh, the, the formats of images that we have supported, we have, uh, you can have a direct, just a directory, a standard Unix directory containing the file system for a container. You can run off of that. Uh, you can run off of several different kinds of archives. And this is all in addition to the image, the .img image format. And then on top of that, we can also run Docker images directly and natively. Uh, so you can actually pull directly from the Docker, Docker hub and run images there using that. Um, and I talked a little bit about Slurm before. There's actually a Slurm plugin. So all you have to do to get your image or your uh, Slurm scripts to run inside a container is just tell Slurm that you want to be using an image. And that's all you have to do. Everything else is, is completely identical. And then, um, so this is just a little bit of documentation. Uh, and then here's a list of our contributors. And uh, we're, of course, always looking for people to contribute. And actually, our store is looking for active developers to hire in some capacity to work on Singularity with us. So feel free to reach out if you want to contribute or help out in any way. Uh, and so that's all I have for you guys. Do we have any questions? Go ahead. 
Uh, Shabby. Shabby. No, just uh, I, yeah, I have a microphone mic from here, so. Oh. Yeah, with Shifter, you have the ability to like uh, mount in external file systems, like Luster, for example, like on Scratch. The singularity support is similar thing to that. Yeah. So you can you can actually mount any directory folder uh, that you want on the host. Uh, and actually, in addition, uh, we did sort of I did sort of an experimental thing where I actually. Uh, had a host that was not running. So are you familiar with CVMFS? It's another just remote file system. We had on the host, we didn't have CVMFS installed. We actually installed CVMFS directly in a container and were able to access files just inside the container without having any of it installed on the host. Does the user themselves or can the system administrator package it in? Both can be done. So, so in order, you can just, uh, if I go back here, to this slide, if you, uh, okay, it doesn't have it here. Um, essentially, there's a, a runtime flag, uh, dash capital B, where you can specify to bind mount any directory on the host to any directory inside the container. But then also the system administrator can configure, if you want to allow that, you can also configure a list of default mounts. Okay. Uh, so I you were talking about the loading the data onto the image before you you run it, mm -hmm. how would, where would that fit in the, in the, the workflow that you showed? Um, let's go back here. So it, that will all fit inside of the, uh, the bootstrap. That's where you load all of your software into the container. Uh, so downloading source code from GitHub and compiling it, all the steps to do that would be done there. It's just simply just, uh, you provide a shell script that is run inside the container. And then you can also, at the same time, you can copy anything from the host into the container. So you could copy, you know, a bunch of data or whatever. Would you be able to, uh, do you support uh, nested definitions? So you could, have, you could have a workflow and then you could build your workflows with different input data, <coughs> input data sets, but based on, a, based on a, another workflow. So I think, I think the best way to achieve something like that um, would be to be bind mounting different file or like different folders from the host into the container uh, at runtime, depending on what you want to use it on. So I don't, we don't have like a layered approach like Docker does. So something like that isn't directly supported yet, um, but we do have support for Docker images. And so if you're running a work, if you have a workflow already set up similar to that where you're building different things on top of one base, in Docker, you can just run, be running those images directly using Singularity. Uh, how do you help this Docker support? Can I just pick up any Docker image and it, it will run the Singularity, or it's just limitations, subclass of Docker? There is absolutely no limitation. You can just do Singularity run uh, Docker colon slash slash any name of any Singularity con or Docker container that's hosted on, on the Docker hub, and then they'll, they'll just run. <coughs> Um, do you have a plan to support Windows and Mac users? No. No. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, at the end of the day, so like, I have a Mac and uh, Greg has a Mac. We just were run. I mean, it's just you spin up a virtual machine and and you we're testing and developing our code in a virtual machine. And I think at the end of the day, that's pretty similar to what Docker is doing too. So it's we just don't provide like a interface for that, I guess. Uh, Performance-wise, do you have a, do you know how this compares with the other uh, container, say Docker, Docker and the other options? Yes, yeah, so <coughs> I wish I included these slides now. They, um, so in, in a talk that Greg gave, he actually compared Docker versus bare metal versus singularity. And um, for the most part, they're all basically the same. I, I mean, Docker's fairly lightweight, Singularity is extremely bare bones, and obviously bare metal is gonna be running bare metal. Um, and so we found that in some cases, Singularity was slightly faster than both bare metal and Docker. Uh, the one thing that we, we saw incredible performance gains from Singularity was like I mentioned, where you have a remote file system and you wanna open um, a thousand files a second or a million files a second or whatever. If you're doing that on a remote file system on bare metal, it's gonna basically DDoS the server. If you do that, if you just put those files in a container on the same remote file system, it'll go 100 times faster. Go ahead. 
What about GPU support? Is yeah, so, so Singularity has native GPU, InfiniBand, OpenMPI. Um, you have access, if you want, to all of the, the devices on the host, just as they are. How about Omnipass? Sorry, what? Omnipass, OPA. It should, it should be the same. I mean, you, you have access to the same exact devices on that the host has access to. So there's no, um, there's no really issue with with running GPU or InfiniBand or whatever. And since it's kernel bypassing with InfiniBand, and I guess with Open with OmniPass as well, you don't need the kernel. You just directly. Yeah. So you have a nice EasyBuild sticker on your on your laptop. <laughs> Is there a plan then to have an integration with EasyBuild? Um. So I'm not positive about that. So are do you work what capacity of easy build are you? Are you just using easy build? Yeah, for application. Uh -huh. So um uh, we we were talking with Kenneth, the the lead developer of easy build and uh, I actually went to speak at their user meeting in February and the goal was to hopefully at some point be providing singularity support for Easy build support for singular. Sorry, <laughs> easy build. Su it's super sensitive. Yeah. Not sensitive. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the goal was to provide some ability to do the bootstrapping process using easy build, and it seems like a, a like a good you know kind of fit. And I'm not sure what the the status of that though is. Okay, I said no, not too shy about sh questions, so you're obviously not shy. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Hey, maybe, maybe just just st stick around a little bit. Um, I mean, you you realize that it's not flickering with his laptop, right? It's yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. You made it. Um, maybe just to make sure that we are all on the same page. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't. I think I'm don't. I'm not. Um, the problem with the container technology that uh, Holger was mentioning is that you need to be root, and this is what you pointed out, right? So when you create a container, you need to change C groups, and for this, you need to be root. So that's why you cannot have user uh, you know, non-privileged running containers. So you cannot do Docker run and everything magically happens, right? So that's why you need to be root. And Singularity gets around it by using SUID bits, right? Yeah, so, so um, I didn't touch a lot on the security uh, and sort of safety side. Essentially, Singularity is, is an SUID binary. Um, and so that, that might be kind of scary to some people. But we, <laughs> um, when you, so we actually, we have had companies do independent security audits of Singularity. Uh, and what we do is we only escalate specifically around sections that need escalation. And we do absolutely the bare minimum escalation. And uh, before any user code is ever even looked at, uh, we drop all permissions permanently. And then we also uh, use some kernel flags, like PR set no new privs, uh, to actually completely shut down the access of the child processes to isolate any privileges. And then using SUID, then we can do the things that the Docker daemon would do uh, to spawn a container. That's nice to, to know, I think. That's uh, the distinction, I think, in my opinion. and. Also, that uh, you 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 fetch the Docker image. What you do, you just extract the file system, right? And you create your own format with it. So, so, just, so the Docker images are stored in a uh, just in a bunch of tar archives. So we just pull the tar archives and then extract them and then run it from the directory. We don't have to do any extra building. You just run it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Shifter does as well. It pulls down the image from Docker Hub with a proxy. I mean, I'm not the Shifter user, but that's what I understood. It just extract the file system, push it in a, in a squash FS, or that's what they did in the, the last uh, release I, I heard about, and, and then it runs it with change root, I think. Maybe they changed a bit, but that's basically the model, pulling down the Docker image, extracting it, and running it. So that's, I think, fairly similar to what, what uh, Singularity does, even though they're not using uh, all this SUID magic that you talked about. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, thanks again.